This week, drivers coming down I-95 in Connecticut have seen a massive highway billboard with the message, Honoring the First Responders of Gaza, Saving Lives Under Israeli Fire. It was sponsored by the Palestine Advocacy Project. I'll be speaking with Claire Maxwell from that group. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Great. So tell us more about the billboard. Uh, For instance, who is shown in the message? What person? So this billboard is a picture of um, Razam al-Najjar. She was a young Palestinian paramedic uh, from the Gaza Strip. Who, who was killed by Israeli snipers during uh, protests at the, at the border wall in Gaza. And she was shot and, and killed um, while administering first aid to wounded protesters. So we really wanted to, to show the world the face of someone who's um, a young, courageous Palestinian woman who very literally gave her life, um, not just in support of her people, but also gave her life in support of um, humanitarian ideals and and who who used her own talents to to support um, to support people who are really asking for a different change to the salute or to the to the ongoing blockade of Gaza. And this took place in, in what they call the Great March of Return, which started, I think, at the end of last March. Yes, it's been almost a year of um, Great March of Return protests in Gaza. So far, I think around 20,000 people have been injured, um, over 200 killed. And among the people who have killed, um, of course, there are... Uh, unarmed civilian protesters, as well as uh, medics like Ms. Uh, Al-Najjar, journalists, and about 40 children. And she wasn't the only uh, first responder or killed or injured? No. Over 200 first responders um, have, been ki- or have been injured uh, by Israeli gunfire, and three, uh, three paramedics, uh, all volunteers, uh, have also been uh, killed. So we mentioned I-95, but but ex- more, what is the location of the billboard? What city? Uh, so it's in Bridge, Bridgeport, Connecticut, near Exit 25. Um, it's an electronic billboard, and you can you can see a big uh, red and white smokestack in the background, right behind the right behind the billboard. All right, that helps us figure it out. Uh, that smokestack is the uh, stack of the notorious Harbor Station. It's uh, the smokestack from the last coal-burning plant in all of New England, spewing hundreds of thousands of tons of carbon dioxide, uh, a huge danger to the world. So it's it's mm-hmm. well known. And uh, so I think it's going south when you're going towards New York. I haven't seen it myself yet, but uh, we'll... we'll keep a, an eye out for it and to let people know. Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately I haven't uh, I haven't seen it in person myself either, although I'm glad that's a location that, um, that people are going to be aware of. Now, did you have any difficulty in getting the, the, uh, the billboard uh, posted anywhere? So this is actually the second time that we've uh, run this billboard. The first time was um, on I-93 in Boston. Uh, We had the same uh, picture, the same message, except that our line at the bottom said, Saving Lives, Rescuing Hope. Um, And the billboard company that we were working with in Massachusetts took took the sign down partly through its run because they were getting harassing and threatening phone calls, um, complaining that this billboard, which, again, you know, is is celebrating uh, first responders uh, and and people who are on a humanitarian mission, uh, people were calling in and saying that it supports terrorism and that it's Mm anti-Semitic. So we're hoping that um, our billboard stays up in, in Connecticut and that, uh, that people can appreciate it for its true message 
uh, and that they're not going after it on trumped-up claims. And the uh, the Barrett company has posted it, and let's hope they have more uh, backbone in this regard. Tell us a, a bit more about, or tell us about the Palestine Advocacy Project. Certainly. So uh, we've been around for about five years now. We're based out of Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we're simply a group of people who, for various reasons, have have wanted to take a stand against um, Israeli uh, abuses against Palestinian um, Palestinian people, Palestinian civilians, and also um, as Americans, we're all very disgusted with the amount of military aid that the U.S. gives to Israel and the unilateral support they have that our government has for Israel, um, even in the face of these really massive human rights violations. And so what we do is we post advertisements, uh, we post billboards, and we run other media campaigns that are um, designed at educating the public a little bit more about about what's going on in Israel and Palestine and about the U.S.'s role in supplying uh, $3.8 billion a year to the Israeli military um, to buy guns and bombs and um, other weapons that are used against normal, everyday people. Could I ask about some of the names of maybe some of the more prominent people in the group? Um, Absolutely. Well, uh, one person I always like to talk about is our founder, uh, Rick Colbath Hess, because uh, he is himself Jewish and the son of a Holocaust survivor, and that's really informed his own desire to uh, start a group that, that advocates for human rights, uh, that advocates against uh, these crimes against humanity. And I like to point that out to people just because we have been accused of being anti-Semitic because we are um, vocally, vocally supporting Palestinians. And I want to say, no, we have uh, Jewish members. We have a founder who's Jewish. We're, we're really proud of what they've brought to the table. And we want to have a place um, where, where people who are Jewish and not Zionist um, can have their voices be heard and and legitimized rather than being torn down. Right. I mean, it's it's so great to emphasize this is a political disagreement. It is not an ethnic or religious matter. Exactly. And I think um, something that, that people don't enjoy doing or don't see fit to do in this conflict is to start off by saying, how do we emphasize everyone's human rights? Um, you know, whether that's your right to freedom of religion, uh, your right to safety, your right simply to um, be able to travel or to be able to, to move freely uh, within a region. Those rights are not protected equally. And so instead of saying um, this is a religious conflict, or something like that, or we have to we have to decide this along religious lines or along ethnic lines. What we're saying is no. Let's take um, let's take human rights as our baseline. Mm-hmm. Let's could, talk could, about how we can ensure everyone's human rights, and then we can go from there. Could you uh, tell me a bit more about yourself? How you got interested in this issue? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I've been doing. Uh, some form of of activism and communications work. Um, pretty much my whole life, uh, I've worked in um, the states, of course, in Puerto Rico, in Greece, in Lebanon, and in Palestine. Um, so I first went to the West Bank when I was a university student. I had an internship working in a summer program for kids in the Aida refugee camp in Bethlehem. Mm-hmm. And I think I, I went there having a pretty loose idea of what was going on. Um, I didn't really understand fully the history of what had happened in Israel and Palestine. 
Uh, but after spending a summer there, um, you know, working with with children whose families were refugees that were growing up with, um, you know, this segregation wall and Israeli soldiers in, in, you know, in guard turrets, you know, literally in their backyards, or seeing the basic indignity of going through a checkpoint every day, or or the level to which, um, again, normal everyday people trying to live their lives were were um, were really sabotaged in doing that by this very permanent menacing uh, Israeli military presence. After I saw that, I was I was. Um, I felt like I really had a responsibility to to address um, my own complicity as an American and to keep doing uh, human rights work and advocacy. So I've been back to the West Bank a few times with them, and I've loved working with the Palestine Advocacy Project because I think we're we're trying to reach people who wouldn't who wouldn't get that message, who wouldn't hear about the difficulties of of day-to-day life in the West Bank and Gaza for uh, Palestinian citizens of Israel because it's not being shown to them in the media. It's not something that they would see any other way if they weren't seeing our advertisements. Great. Well, if people want to learn more about your group, what is your website? You can find us uh, at www.palestineadvocacyproject.org. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you so much for this interview. Thank you, too.